If you are a bug bounty hunter or a pen tester, then you know that crafting an effective report is very crucial for getting your vulnerabilities fixed or even just getting them triaged. But the question here becomes, what exactly makes a report effective? Whether you're submitting a finding to a bug bounty program or delivering a formal pen test report, the core elements remain surprisingly very, very similar between pen test and bug bounty. But before we dive into this video, I wanna quickly thank our sponsors for this video of Plextrack. Throughout the video, we'll not only learn how to write an effective report, but I'll also show you how Plextrack can help streamline and improve each component of your reporting process. And if you're not familiar with Plextrack, they automate pen test planning, reporting, and findings delivery so offensive security teams can be more efficient and focus on security work that moves the needle. So for this video, we're going to break down exactly what goes into a great security report. I'll show you how both bug bounty hunters and pen testers can structure their findings to get results and why these elements are so important for both contexts. We'll cover everything from writing descriptive titles that instantly communicates the issue to crafting clear proof of concepts that anybody can follow. Along the way, I'll show you how Plextrack can actually enhance each of these elements to make your report process even more efficient and more professional. Now, let me show you the five key components that every good report needs to have. Then I'll walk you through a real example from a vulnerability that I recently discovered, one that is actually very similar to a CTF challenge we have created with Godfather or what. But before we get to that example, let's break down these essential elements. First up, you need a descriptive title. And I'm not talking about something like account takeover via XSS or SQL injection. Your title should tell them immediately what and where the vulnerability is. Something like stored XSS and user profile bio field allows account takeover, or maybe you can write something like time-based SQL injection in product search API. These both give them context immediately. Next, you want a solid vulnerability description. This is where you explain what the vulnerability is, where exactly you found it, and what functionality it affects. Think of this as maybe setting up the scene. If there is any prerequisite like being logged in or having specific user permissions, you need to make sure that you are crystal clear here. The third component, and this is very, very important, is your proof of concept. You need to write a step-by-step -step reproduction step that anybody can follow. Think of it this way. If somebody on the security team picks this up at 3 a.m., they should be able to reproduce this without having to ask you any questions. Fourth is your impact statement and bug bounty hunters listen up. This is especially important for you. Never assume that the triagers understand the full impact of what you have found. But here's the key. Be honest. Don't try to sell a low impact bug as something that is critical. I usually include an impact statement in my pen test reports too because they help stakeholders understand why they need to care about this vulnerability. And last but not least, finally, you need to have remediation guidelines or just references. For pen test reports, especially, you need to make sure they understand how to fix this issue. Even for bug bounty reports, providing some guidance shows your thinking about the complete picture. So just put that at the bottom of your report. Look for things like on OWASP or other online websites to include them in your report. And one last tip, don't hesitate to include some sort of a video recording, especially if you're dealing with really complicated vulnerabilities. Sometimes showing it is way better than telling it, especially again, if you're doing a complex attack chain or even some vulnerabilities like race conditions. So don't be shy, include a video. It will promise you it would be way better than just writing about it. All right, now let me show you how all this comes together. But before we do that, drop me a comment with the word POC if you want to see a full and complete walkthrough of this bug or maybe even I can just go back to Godfather Orwa and ask him to come back on this channel and make it to the redacted series and show us how to exploit this on his own. Now, let's quickly look at our example. For this one, what I had found is a similar approach to this. I found weak credentials that gave me access to this entire platform, but the caveat to this finding was that it only had read-only access. So if we type in test and we get test again, right here you can see it says, hey, you do not have permission. So we have access, but it's very, very limited. On its own, this is a vulnerability. The criticality of this isn't as high because obviously we don't have admin access and that is very evident by just looking at the error that we get when we try to execute this. So if we go in here and I wanted to write a report, I'm gonna quickly just call this report. 
The first thing is our title, which I would call this weak credentials for admin panel on domain.com gives read only access. Then we're going to write our description, which is when looking at this domain, I was able to discover the username view has a weak password view that allows us to log into the admin panel. However, the current user is unable to modify any data. Pretty cool. We describe what it means, but now we need to give it a good POC. And in our POC, we're saying, hey, go to this domain, enter view as username, enter it as password. And now you have successfully logged in and you have read only privileges. And then we want to include our statement, which with a screenshot, because I've learned having a screenshot usually helps. So the triagers know what to expect for the behavior that they're seeing. So if they see this exact screenshot, they know that they have fully reproduce this and in our impact statement what i write here is this allows limited access to functionality behind this panel which is meant to be accessed by trusted users including employees an attacker could potentially leverage us to just escalate their privileges by exploiting current functionality or existing users we'll get to that in just a bit but that is our current impact statement the next thing is one of our recommendations which i'm just saying change the password enable mfa and also enforce better password policy this by itself is great for a bug bounty report in bug bounty reports you can be a little bit unofficial you can be just bullet points because you want them just to be able to reproduce this quickly but with a pen test report you want to include full sentences it's not as informal as a bug bounty report but it doesn't help to do the same approach with your reports i just tend to be quicker and to the point with my reports especially when i know the triages are reading this and they only need to see this much of the report in order to reproduce it and send it to the customer. So this is what we have. But now what I want to do is I want to switch over to Plex track and see if we can improve this by giving it to Plex track and using their AI to see what it gives us. First, I'm going to put in my title because I want to give it context because it matters what it has in the title. Before I give it a description, I'm just going to write use AI and see what it gives me. And it looks like it's saying, hey, the website domain.com has weak credentials protecting its admin panel allowing unauthorized users to get read only access this vulnerability identified by cve we don't have a cve for it which is not it's something that we can use but it says that it poses a significant risk as it enables potential attackers to browse sensitive data without needing to exploit any further vulnerabilities so without giving it anything it gave us something really cool but I'm going to actually give it some context for my description and use it again. And this time it's saying, okay, we have a security vulnerability that allows unauthorized access to this admin panel. An attacker could exploit this weakness by using username view and password view. This is the best part. While currently limited to read only access, this vulnerability poses significant risk as it provides unauthorized parties with sensitive information. I like this more, so we're going to replace it. But then I'm going to just do my reproduction steps or our POC, but I want to go down here and I'm going to drop it into our POC section and just use AI for this one. I don't expect anything different because our entire process is use this username, use this password. Bam, you have logged in, but let's see if it recommends anything better for it. So it looks like it gives us something similar. I like to do bullet points. This is also really good. This is very straightforward. We can keep it as it is. But what I want to do is I want to see if my impact statement makes sense. So I'm going to go down to my impact statement area and write one more thing using AI, see what it gives us. And then we're going to wrap this up with the references or the recommendations. But I want to try one more complicated vulnerability that's not just this straightforward and see what it gives us. So it looks like for the impact statement, it's saying we credentials for admin panel on this grants read only access, enabling potential privilege escalation through exploiting of existing functionality or user accounts. I think this sounds a little bit better than what I wrote. It's a little bit shorter, but also it just reads easier. So I'm going to replace it. But what I want to do next is I want to see if our recommendations, if my recommendations are better than Plex Tracks AI. So based on all of this here, I'm not going to give it anything, but I'm just going to say, hey, generate some AI related recommendations. I think it's going to be very on par, but this is also a pen test tool. So it may just give us more steps and things to do, but I want to see which one is better. So it says, Prompting it, it gives us a good description. Promptly addressing weak credentials is crucial. And it says change default credentials, something that we have. Implement account lock policy. That's actually a really good one that we didn't have in ours. Because I forgot to say, hey, if they try multiple passwords, maybe we should lock the account. It says enhance access control, enable MFA or 2FA, and then regularly update and patch. So I think with everything that we have, this is a little bit better. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. I'm going to throw it in here. And then I'm just going to have it do one based on all of this. I'm going to throw it all in there again. 
let it clean it up and give us a full list of everything I have and Plex Track has. Put that in there and wrap up that first report. Don't worry, this is very straightforward. I get it. I'm gonna do one more, which is gonna be a little bit better, but I wanna try something really crazy with this. And now that we have this, we can just copy this into our report and we can call it good for our recommendations, which honestly, if you're doing this for a bug bounty report, this would be very cool to have, but obviously for a pen tester, it's more required and then be nice to have. I'm gonna leave this as it is. This would be a very good one for us to do. We do have our five important and crucial steps, which is our title, a nice description, a proof of concept, our impact statement, and obviously the recommendations of whether you want to put them in there. That's up to you. I usually include them, which now with Plex Track, we have something really, really cool to put on there so we can be done with this and go to our second example. So for the second example, we want to look at a local file read that allows us to get privilege escalation. So we're going to right off the bat say, hey, we got privilege escalation via this local file read that resides in this panel within this exact endpoint and this parameter. So by doing this, we're giving them exactly where the vulnerability is, what the parameter is, and what is the impact of it at a first glance. Then we're going to talk about the description, which we say, hey, this folder was not accessible. And even if we wanted to access it, you can see it in the screenshot. I couldn't read files from it, but then we were able to find an endpoint called download, which allowed us reading internal files on the web server, including those within web-inf. So this is a good place for us to give us the story of what we have found and what we could do with it. Then we follow up with our production steps. We say log in with the credentials that we have from our RAS report. Don't assume that I've read your last report. This could be someone completely new. So we're saying view view is the username and password. Send the following request. We're sending the entire HTTP request so they can see how we have done it. Attaching a screenshot of the results. Then we're saying what it discloses and then how we can leverage that to get access. So I'm saying, hey, open this XML file, crack the password within it, which is an MD5. And if you see right here, what I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, the password is superpass123. And here is a link. So if you go to this link, you can actually see how I have cracked it so you can see it opens it up and then it gives us the password super pass one, two, three. And then we can say to them, hey, once you're logged in as admin, you're able to access groovy scripts and execute commands that on its own, I would probably file by itself, but it's good to have in there as an impact statement that says, hey, not only I have local file read, not only I've gotten access to admin, but I can also escalate this to RCE by having this. And then last but not least, our impact statement that says, hey, you know, the local file vulnerability allows us to do specific things. And then we say by reading the web.xml configuration file, I was able to escalate the admin access, escalate to an admin user with access to Groovy scripts, which can be leveraged for remote command execution. We're highlighting that in there in our impact statement. I don't recommend not putting that in there. It just, just gives them an entire impact for it. But obviously, we want to finish this with our recommendation, which is restrict the download functionality to specific file types and folders in the web server. This covers all the five things that I've said throughout the video, but I want to see if PlexTrack could do a better job of doing this. But I want to try something really tricky. I wonder if I could give it just this specific HTTP header and see if it can give us the results. So let's try it out really quickly. We're going to go into here really quickly. I have my title inside of it, so it has some context. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just copy this and see what it gives us for the description. So it looks like I'm having some issues because of the image. So maybe we remove it and we just type this in there and close this. So there's no image anymore. And we just want to see what description it gives us just based on the HTTP request. I'm not giving it anything else other than that HTTP request. And it looks like it's coming back and it's saying this website is vulnerable to a ser serious security flaw. An attacker could potentially exploit this by sending specific requests to their web server. This request allows them to read sensitive files such as this, which includes critical system information. Once accessed, an attacker could escalate their privileges and potentially execute arbitrary code on the server, leading to a full system compromise. That is not bad. I know I do have the RC here, which I can remove, but I think it would still do it. So what I wanted to do here was I just wanted to see can AI actually give us a description based on the HTTP response or the HTTP header that we give it. And it looks like it was super successful. So what I want to do now is actually give it my description and just give it some context and see if it can give us a better one, which I think with the way I've been writing these and just seeing throughout this video, it's going to do a better job than I do. We're going to ask it for a description, but I also want to copy our 
reproduction step, I'm going to delete our photo and just copy these. And I want to give it to the bottom portion as well to give us a better and accurate reproduction step. So it looks like the description is pretty much better than ours. So I'm going to put it in here. It says the website domain.com contains a serious security flaw that could allow unauthorized access to internal files. It gives us pretty much the, the folder where the vulnerability is. It says what it enables, especially given it's in the web end. And it also says that, hey, this critical data allows to get unauthorized privileges. Cool. We have that. Let's now delete the screenshot. And what I'm going to do here is give it our reproduction steps and get that to get going. And we're going to generate this. I don't think it's going to give us something different. I think what I have in there is pretty good, but it looks like I've been wrong throughout this entire video. So let's see what it gives us now. I love that it's actually cleaning up everything and giving it to us in Markdown. Most of the bug bounty platforms that I use are in that format, but also it just makes it look nicer. It looks like it's giving us a pretty good write up. I'm just going to copy this to see what it looks like on my end. I'm going to replace it and we're going to have to kind of clean this up because my formatting is different. This is kind of why I also like using that platform to write my reports because I don't have to worry about the style and everything but we're doing a report for bug bounty hunters and pen testers but we have this now we can see that it's giving us everything we need it looks like it does look better because it's breaking down the username and password from originally what i had if we go back into it you can see it was it had the username and password it was all over the place i do like to include this for a lot of people because people ask hey how do you find it so i'm just going to include this i think it's going to ignore most ais are going to ignore the links you gave it but I want to put that in there just because of the fact that I want him to understand that, hey, this is a super easily guessable password. And then we just say, hey, once you're logged in, you have access to it. Now, let's just finish up by having it write our impact statement. So this is our last thing before we do our recommendations. And then we can wrap this entire thing up. It looks like pretty much similar to what I had in there. Again, I think the wordage and the way it's written, it's better. I think AI is way smarter than I am. So we here we can see it says enables access to local files on the web server. Exploiting this, attackers could read web.xml configuration, escalate privileges to admin users, and potentially execute remote commands via Groovy script. I love that it says potentially because I didn't test this out. I have not tested it out. I would actually go and write it to the different report. But for the sake of example, I love that it says potential because we also want to make sure that they're okay with us running uh, a command on this box. So let's just wrap this up quickly by going into our recommendations. And I don't want to give it anything for recommendations. I want to try it out and see what it gives us. My recommendation personally was restrict the download functionality to specific file tops and folders within the web server. Curious to see what this one's going to say. And it looks like it's saying, actually it's saying restrict access to the admin download endpoint, which is kind of fair because we were also a user with lower privileges that I didn't even think about. Then it says to review and secure the web end folder, which makes sense. And then also input validation and regularly updating and patching. I love these. I'm going to copy them and throw them in there as a part of our recommendations. But now we have a fully well ran report. As you can see, this thing is beautiful. It's very well done and very much improved using the Extract platform, which I've been enjoying using in the past couple of months. My goal for this video was to just kind of give you an idea of how to write your proof of concepts. A lot of times I see people miss things that don't include enough information. And then I also get collaboration invites of people saying, hey, will you collaborate with me? I can't communicate this. And then when I read the reports, it just looks like they didn't put enough steps. And it just assume that the person on the other side of the screen, whether it's a triager or it's someone on the security team on that customer team knows everything. Never assume. Always, always, always start from the most basic way to go all the way through with screenshots, impact statements, and recommendation. Honestly, if you can't reproduce your own vulnerability solely by following the steps you have put in that report, then nobody else can. So right before you submit that report, make sure you go through it and make sure you try to reproduce an entire vulnerability based on only the things that you have put in there. And so this way it allows you to see if there's any gaps, anything you have forgotten, and it just gives you a good way to practice and get better at writing reports all right that's it do me a favor do all the liking do all the commenting become a nahomi we are almost at 150k let's get there by the end of the year and i will see you all in next week's video peace